I'm gonna do a video on pulling a motor out of a seventh generation Celica. I'm gonna assume you pretty much already know basic stuff like how to get an alternator off, taking batteries out, stuff like that, air cleaner box. Um, just gonna go over how to get the stuff and on a standard transmission, engine and transmission has to come out together. It won't clear the clutch, there's not enough room. Somebody may have been able to do it. Uh, I'm not going to mess with it. Automatic transmission, never done an automatic Celica. I know an automatic on a Corolla. You can take the motor out and leave the transmission in. Looks like the space is similar on the front. You should be able to take the bolts loose from the torque converter with an automatic and have the... How about that? Camera ran out of memory. Anyway, you'll be able to pull the engine out, leave the transmission behind. The only problem you have with that is you have to disconnect a little bit of the wiring harness. Uh, the way I'm going to pull this motor out, I'm going to disconnect wiring harness from the ECU and I'm going to pull the wiring harness loose from the main fuse box. That way I don't have to get in underneath and pull all the sensors loose in the motor, disconnect all these wires, hold the wiring harness back. To lift out the fuse box, well, there are three clips on this one, four clips on this one. You have to work with them a little bit because they all have to come back kind of together. See, as you push one back, it won't lift up. You got to get two of them to come back to get it to start coming up just a tiny bit. Then it'll come out all the way around. Disconnecting the ECU, same as any other plugs on your car. Oh, also on the lid, two bolts. And it says, do not open. After all these clips are pushed back, these will raise straight up out. One thing, you want to be kind of careful with these wires, very small. Push that back in. The screwdriver will hook under that edge just a little bit and it'll help you raise it up. If that doesn't work, put your finger on the clip and these little tabs you can get the screwdriver to push up on. This needs a little persuasion to get past a little plastic clip right there. The whole thing comes out, stays in one piece. Then in the corner, there's a small, I believe, temperature sensor. Stand that up. Pop the rubber boots out. These will all come out through this hole one at a time. I just usually find one that will easily come out first, get it out of the way. Once again, you're trying not to stress these wires too much. Same on the other side. When you get these out, you can raise them up quite a ways with the slack that's in the wires coming from the rest of the body wiring harness. So what you're going to do is you're going to be looking at this bundle of wires right here to disconnect so that you can get the whole wiring harness out with the engine. I'm going to probably pull these up higher than what I normally do so that you can see them. Hopefully I don't stress any of these wires too much okay the bond wiring harness from the motor is mostly this right here and this harness piece coming around here you have to disconnect this plug this plug 
here and here. This one, two here, and this one here. This one, if you've never pulled one of these out, pulls out like this by pushing these two tabs, There's one on this end, one on this end. As you pull it down, this little arm rocks over and it has to be pulled a little bit square, it releases. The rest of them just push tabs, pop out. Sometimes the tabs are a little hard to get to. Using the needle nose pliers, just use caution so you don't break it, helps you push the tab. Once you got that wire disconnected and you get everything untangled underneath here, then this harness will lift right out of the slot in the box. And you'll be able to take the motor out. With the wiring harness hooked to the motor, you won't have to disconnect every single one of those sensors underneath there with the motor still in the car. Cruise control. Two little latches, pop the cover off. Loosen this nut. Cable out. Lay that back out of your way. Three bolts. Two of them down in the bottom. One up front. Clamps. I've already loosened this nut. I try to loosen the back side of the nut on every one of these cables. That way I know it's pretty well going to be an adjustment when I put them back in. Uh, before you go any further you might want to lay these boxes back in place. You don't have to push them all the way down in the clips. Um, because if you close the hood or lay the hood back down, you're going to end up breaking a corner off one of these or something like that. Don't ask me how I know that. Um, you might wonder why I started with the wiring harness. Uh, it's kind of an intimidating prospect to disconnect all these wires and pull them loose. Well, it is to me anyway. I'm, I remember working on motors when all you had was a wire to the starter and maybe a wire to the carburetor, a wire to the alternator, and that was it. So all these wires, when I first saw this kind of stuff, I didn't know what to do with it. As um, long as you take it easy with these wires, they're pretty well attached, real hard to break them. And it makes it a lot easier bringing a motor out when you can just disconnect them all at one point. You don't have to crawl all over the motor. I mean, on this particular motor, there's wires underneath there, underneath the intake manifold that are almost impossible to get to. Uh, this is a 2ZZ motor coming out of a Celica, 1ZZ, same thing, wiring harness is exactly the same. So, well we'll keep moving on forward, now we start with mechanical stuff, nuts, bolts. Like I said, I'm going to assume that most people know the basics, how to pull out fans and stuff like that. Might show a little bit about where bolts are located on that, but, uh, Let's move on. Cruise control. Two little latches, pop the cover off. Loosen this nut. Cable out. Lay that back out of your way. Three bolts. Two of them down in the bottom. One up front. Clamps. I've already loosened this nut. I try to loosen the back side of the nut on every one of these cables. That way I know 
it's pretty well going to be an adjustment when I put them back in. Pull this plastic tab loose. Get this out of the way. Uh, radiator has two bolts here. I've already got the hoses disconnected. Has a connector here for both fans. And then the hood latch and the center support have to come out. Two things pulling the radiator out, forgot to mention. You've got to disconnect the wire here, and you also have to disconnect the fan on the driver's side. Also, this tube right here is plugged into the bottom of the radiator right there. Down in there is the belt tensioner right there I made this tool out of a old half inch breaker bar and a three-quarter six-point socket because if you can see on that you can see how somebody used a 12-point that it slips it's a cast part and it's not exactly a 19 millimeter so if you try to use a 12-point on them they slip Anyway, just wanted to show you that because that's a real pain on the Toyotas. And uh, if you do very many of them, making that helps because there's not really enough distance for a half inch breaker bar in a, to fit into a socket. It works, but it's not easy. But like I said, I recommend six point. Couple of tips um, take all the wires loose in the alternator before you take the bolts out and before you loosen the top bolt on the alternator take the bottom bolt all the way out I got lucky with this one once I broke it loose I was able to screw it out all the way with my fingers because the weight of the alternator wasn't hanging on it um, I disconnect the wires all the way down AC compressor too so I can Get them a little bit out of my way to get the alternator out. Still got a couple hooked under there, but. Air conditioner, three bolts. One right there, there, there. There's not a bolt in that hole. There's no uh, boss behind it for it to mount to. Um, again, this bolt you have to use box end wrench to get to. So I take it completely out first before I loosen the bottom two and then I'll just drape this alternator over the headlight put a rag underneath it it'll hang out of my way or alternator air compressor AC compressor over the headlight side put a rag under it good thick towel or something so it doesn't scratch up paint and stuff get it out of my way 